Hello and welcome back to my mountain of shame. Today we have a Horatio story. Love thyself. This is a really weird one. Um, in that it's basically, as far as I understand it, it's basically Endless Space Universe and it's a visual novel. It's actually a free game to boot. And I claimed it ages ago and I didn't even know what the bloody Endless series is like. So why am I playing this? Anyway, it is apparently a visual novel, so I've enlisted the help of Para to play some voices. Hello, Para! Hello! So yes, let's go see what the heck's going on with Love Thyself, a Horatio story. It is impossible to dissociate my story from that of Horatio, the first of our name. The first of beings travel widely between the stars, known as the Endless. We know of no earlier form of intelligent life that moved between galaxies. Their history is glorious, but above all, tragic. They unlocked the secrets of time, space, the stars, and life itself. They were unable to master their own internal conflicts. What remains now of the endless, strange, disjointed traces in the forms of seeds, observatories, and experiments of cities, of wonders, of worlds, and perhaps, though not all this is clear or verifiable, in the forms of other peoples. Many star-faring civilizations have since riven, risen to the fore. Some have fallen as well. Events in recent history have led to an explosion in a number of players on the galactic scene. One of these, undoubtedly major one, is Horatio. Once upon a time, Horatio was just a man, a simple trillionaire. One night a vision came to him in the shape of a dream. It was a vision of an empire and eternal life. He left everything behind, venturing in the stars. Over the ages, he discovered many mysteries left by the Endless, and his knowledge of the power and power grew. He created his first sons. He willed his empire into existence, a beacon of all that is brilliant and beautiful. Now the empire of Horatio flourishes, and Horatio himself is immortal, with the power to rival that of the Endless themselves. Some say that they were living gods. They're dead now, though we strive through our brother, our god Horatio. Okay. That's an interesting start. <laughs> you were about to say something before I started the introduction. What's up? It, was I? I thought you were. It sounded like you were. Maybe I was wrong. I was probably just laughing. Okay, fair. So should we go towards the light or stay in the dream? Let's go towards the light. Gotta get started. <laughs> yeah, let's go towards the light. I think I hear someone. I think I hear someone. All the clones all in this... Oh, sorry. Wow. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can take it. You can take it. That's a good point. No, 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 they're was, all the same was, person. <laughs> I was looking at the... Um, sorry, for a moment there, I thought his shirt was the, uh, the swirl moving. The what movie? The Swell's movie. No, I think it's just the um, slight movement of the light in the background. That makes more sense. Mm. That's all I had to say. Okay, well, you can, you can do the lab technician. Okay. Uh, all the clones in this batch are to be decanted today. I know this is earlier than the original schedule planned for, but the schedule didn't plan for two patrol squads in the heartland of the Empire to go missing within a month. Just follow my lead, and the procedure will be fine. If you do well today, you might be promoted to junior, tab junior lab technician earlier than expected. That would be amazing, sir. Don't interrupt. Most of the process is automated, but contrarily to some of the clone hatching sequences you've seen in class, the final steps are still done by hand. There are procedures for which a computer cannot be trusted, and you have to rely on steady Horatio judgment. <laughs> Back to our specimens. You will handle clone births A through L. I'll do the other row. Pick one and get to work. Okay. Ah, uh, can you hear me? Huh. One moment I'm asleep and the next I'm sorry. One moment I'm asleep and the next I'm alive. My eyes struggle to adjust to the brightness of the room. It slowly comes into focus. 
There's a man in white and blue uniform bent over me, with a bald, elongated head and look of concern on his face. Uh, hello? Hmm? Ah, you're, you're awake. Great. I have a couple questions for you. He shoves a small holy pad he's holding into my place. It's very bright and I recoil slightly, groaning at something. He starts flipping through the pages when the other voice calls out. Come over here, please. I need your help. The, the man looks for a place to put down in the hollow pad and realizes his outfit doesn't have pockets big enough to accommodate it. Targus F07, I'm talking to you. Get moving. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, I'm coming. Uh, he looks he looks down at me and ends up putting the tablet down next to me. I'll be back. He trots away and out of sight. I try to put myself up on one elbow so I can keep watching him. He starts the platform a distance away, on which lies Lake and Man, another uniformed man is standing nearby, looking at the side panel on the next to the platform. All three of them look exactly like brothers. Ah, uh, how can we have help, sir? The uniformed man points at the naked form in front of him. This clone is faulty. The lights are on, but it seems nobody's home. I try to make sense of all this. These people are all clones of one another? Uh, what do you mean, sir? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? He can hear us, but he can't respond. Something must have gone wrong during the... On the outside, he's fine. But his motor and educational imprint is... The result is this useless hope. What good is it being beautiful if you can't make everyone proud? <laughs> the cloning bats are near perfect. But every once in a while, some other part of the pipeline produces mm -hmm. a disgusting abnormal or ab ab abnormality. Let's take care of him and chalk him up as a total. Well, what do you need me to do? Simple. Take his legs. The man called Turgosaur grabs the unmoving clone by the ankle and looks at the other clone. The latter has passed out under the clone's arms and pulls him off the platform with a grunt. We'll put the body in the recycling chute. This way we get the nutrients. Think of it as his way of contributing. I mean, that's his recycling. It's not going to give me. He's not going <laughs> to give anything. He's just going to literally become somebody else. Yeah, but not even somebody else. He's just going to, like, become part of it. Like, he, there'd have to be some lost resources in the process. He's still a net drain. Both of them tug and pull haphazardly before they're long they're panting. We can't afford to show weakness time or ever. Everything and everyone is perfect and beautiful in the Horatio Empire. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a kindness we're doing to him. When you think about it. I watch as they come nearer and realize there are about a dozen other men on the platform. All of them in various states of lying down, sitting up. Looks grotesque scene. I uh, look at this grotesque scene with some mild interest. Every single one of them is a carbon copy of the tree in front of us. I catch my reflection on the surface and suddenly I realize I too am one of them. A clone of them. A Horatio. It is a good thing we caught this now, so we can fix it before the ceremony. Our records need to be perfect. Otherwise, we'll end up in a backwater station, decanting only he knows what. This is a small blessing, really. I'm gonna guess, since this game is basically Endless Space Universe, that there is literally an empire in Endless Space. There's just the Horatio Empire, which is a bunch of clones. So I'm guessing this is literally <laughs> one of the empires in that game. I would be surprised. For you and me, I mean. For him, not so much. The trio passes in front of me, and for a moment, my eyes lock into those of the faulty clone. Far from being dead inside, I can see fear radiating from him. He knows he's going to be killed, off because he's going to be perfect. I sit up and try to figure out what these tests are about. I don't want to follow the guy into a recycling chute. Every time I think of the memory test in Hales, I come up with a blank. I think that's the issue right here. My body's functional, I can understand what people are saying and think, but there's nothing in all the memory implants they mentioned. I'm a blank slate. 
prop him up while I open the chute. Which means I am also incomplete and imperfect, and I would need to get the heck out of here before I get discovered. <laughs> Better conceal yourself. I've got to do something about this. I turn and I look to Chloe next to me, who's glazing about with an air and studied detachment. Our eyes lock, and his expression skips to a, shift to a scowl. I haven't done anything to deserve it, although I've been fidgeting on the platform. What are you looking at, Substrate? I rummage for a good comeback. All these guys hold perfection in very high regard. I know, I know what'll shut them up right away. <laughs> oh shit I'm wondering whose clone you are surely you can't be one of us it takes him a moment but he eventually gets it he reddens and mutters under his breath it definitely doesn't sound friendly I realize we seem to be easily provoked and causing a scene might be my way out I pull my legs off the platform and do just that when I catch something about to fall off it's the holopad that Tragus 7 left at my side there's some information here that will keep, help me cheat my way through the test and said, what should I do? So should we cheat or provoke a fight? Um, Let's cheat. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the best bet in general, just because, like, if they're looking for perfection and they assume that we're all perfect and that uh, a faulty one is so rare, it should be pretty easy to cheat. Whereas if we fight, they might just take down, destroy the whole batch. I'll go for a subtle approach. I sit back down and put my holopad on my lap. There are a number of tabs open, medical procedures, inventories, the news. There's a tab that seems to be a serial called Forbidden Love. I press the button in front of the image and the show resumes. The sound is off, the subtitles are on. I can only guess the target 7 is not as studious as he appears. The show is taking pace in a richly decorated room with draperies hanging off the walls. A piece of ornate piece of ornate furniture, elongated vases and tall tall chalices. Everywhere, portraits, statues, three D holograms representing me. Well, who's the me who's in charge? We really seem into ourselves. Right on cue, there's another me on screen. He's arguing about something, and we were somewhere we can't see. Two other Horatios come to view, one dressed as soldier, and the other in civilian clothes. The soldier's demanding a rebellion distant colony be met with force, while a civilian is offering a more measured approach. Presenting as it is magnanimous. The argument goes back and forth for a bit, with the main me, whom they call Prime, eventually making the call. He'll be magnanimous and offer the rebels a chance to redeem themselves. The soldier stomps off, while the other guy sticks around and shuffles closer to him. They share a quick quick embrace before he slinks off. I fast forward a bit. I I mean in a world where everyone's a clone, you're basically just like it's a I don't know where that goes. Like, are you just basically masturbating every time you pay any form of attention to every <laughs> single person in the area? It's like, ah, good. I'm glad you're here. Why? I know I need some relief. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> the soldier comes back in the next scene. Sort of parlor. Prime and him exchange some oblique, oblique remarks. It becomes clear in the shadows. Things are going to be pretty bad for the rebels anyway. So, that's the way things are done around here, okay. When a soldier tears off his uniform, revealing a perfectly smooth chest, the two exchange a smoldering look. What? Their lips meet with passion and they fall to the ground. Oh. I hear footsteps approaching and I swiftly put the tablet back down. Terror goes FO7 is going my way. I rest my hand on the platform and do my best look detached. I'm ready to play the part. Right! He picks up the tablet, swipes through it, then looks up at me. Right! Alright, I'll ask you a couple of questions. Just make sure everything's fine. Let's go over. No, let's go over this pal. I've got places to be. Uh, settle down, please. It'll only take a moment. Uh, it looks like your motor controls are working fine. Let's tick the box and move on to memory test. I'll make it short. What was the name of the first and foremost, our god, creator, and benefit re reader? It's Horatio Prime. Horatio Prime. Targus looks at me and nods in approval. Okay, you're now fully functioning Horatio. What? That's what I mean. That's why I figured that would have to be the easiest way. They are so egotistical that all it takes is... Yep, he clearly knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Sit tight. We're done with the processing everyone else. With that, he moves on, taking his whole pen with him. Oh, that was easy. I lay back on the platform and relax. Sometime later, the assistant comes back. Ah, thank you for waiting. 
I'm going to ask you please head into wardrobe in the next room over where you can find your station uniform. Anyone will do. They're all the same size, obviously. After that, you'll be directed towards indoctrination. This will be followed by dinner and orientation, and you'll be shown to your quarters. Now this way, please. The next door room opens, and we step inside. There's a few tablets on the end of the room. Uniforms neatly stacked and folded next to one another. We look at each other uneasily until someone steps forward and grabs a uniform, looks at it warily, and puts it on. We follow sweet suit, some in a green jumpsuit, two deep pockets. Uh, it, it closes with a simple zipper at the front. The uniform is pretty snug fit, and the fabric seems sturdy, yet comfortable. I notice there are pairs of light boots on the table, so I take a pair. They're a bit tight. I put my hands in my pockets look around me, waiting for what's next. The wait doesn't seem to last. After a minute, another door opens. The assistant from the floor is holding a holo pad and peers inside. Okay, um... Well, normally it's someone else to show you the way to indoctrination. We're a bit short-staffed at the moment here, apparently. Uh, there's a grumble from my neighbours, the lack of de decorum. I've lived the path from the hollow screams. They'll guide you there. Just proceed down the hallway to the concourse and follow instructions. Sorry about that. I shuffle out of the room, hesitantly walk down the, ho the hallway, hoping I won't get lost. The others are following me, though, although at a distance. No one seems to want to take the initiative. They seem to be familiar with our surroundings, but not with the layout of the station. At least none of us has to pretend. I think no one wants to be going the wrong way and make a mistake in front of the others. I've seen the crossways twice and stuck, path, and stuck to the path indicated by the arrow on the wall stream. So far, so good. I keep walking. The others follow. Eventually, I hear a murmur in distance, which grows distant as I draw nearer. I see some bright lights in distance. Much more colourful environment. I step out into the plaza, a cathedral of green and gold. There are columns of glass everywhere, manicured trees in the shrubs every corner, and overhead an immense glass canopy. This must be concourse. There are of course people here, all wearing the same jumpsuits as we are. Probably fresh new clones like us. Even my jaded reverend around me are murmuring amongst themselves in tones of wonder and amazement, as if talking out loud might make the wonders flow away. This way, please! Oh, sorry, that should probably be you. The voice cuts <laughs> through the noise effortlessly. In a moment, the conversations go quiet. A Horatio has appeared in an immense looking holosphere, inviting us to move along. There are more horror projectors, leading to, what was it? Indoctrination. That sounds unpleasant. Nevertheless, I follow the crowd. Oof. Yeah. We meander through the corridors for a couple of minutes before we reach our destination. Now, it should be said, for indoctrination to probably work, I would imagine that it relies on the fact they've got those memories in their head. So probably what it's doing is programming what's in their head to the way they need to believe. So it may not actually work on our hero anyway. <laughs> this is a huge room covered in rich materials, from the deep carpeting in the middle of the room to the panelled walls. There are long rows of wide, comfortable-looking seats, and a wall face covering an immense hollow screen. Low columns from the arcades run across the wall, or the, the walls of the room. It's beautiful. A ratio in a red suit is standing with arms crossed, a low podium in front of the hollow screen. He has a studied look of annoyance on his face. All of us are inside the room, he speaks up. May I have your attention? Crowd falls silent. His voice carries across the room, even from somewhere near the entrance. I can easily hear him. Please take a seat. Go all the way through the row. Don't just hog the center seats. You'll see, you'll hear me just fine from the size as well. Given, once again, they're all clones and they're all egotistical assholes, one would imagine. That yeah, they'll just <laughs> <laughs> They all gotta be in the center. Exactly. I wish you rush over from the new clones to do exactly the opposite of that. Yep. See, technically <laughs> I feel like they really should have made these clones have a slightly different preset emotion. But they're perfect. Ugh, I guess. <laughs> so soon enough a cluster of Horatio is seeing the prime seats. And preventing the rest of the file from moving along. Oh, for his sake. Go around the audience and find a seat on the other side. And occupy the back and side seats if necessary. Yeah, maybe they should have... Um, maybe they really should have just, like, made a bigger auditorium where all of them could sit in the center. <laughs> That's not... That's yeah. not... Th that's never gonna work. No, 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 no. Bigger auditorium. They all sit in the center, and then basically you just 
manage the number of clones based on how many center seats you've got. So you won't, you never wake up more than you can handle at one time. So they're all sitting in the center and they all feel important. I feel like this is just poor management. Honestly, Horatio, I think this, this plan is far from perfect. <laughs> I mean, they're clearly not perfect. They just believe themselves to be perfect. Yes, definitely, definitely. It does make me want to play the Endless Space Universe to find out what the bloody hell these guys' problems are. Well, I mean... Uh... It looks like we have... You probably have both, but it looks like I have one of them. Let's see if I do. Let's see, library. I probably even played one of them, but it wouldn't mean I played this. And the space. I last played it in September 2019 for eight minutes. So I clearly didn't <laughs> play it very long. Um, I do also have Endless Space 2, which would be on my mountain. So eventually I will play that, I'd imagine. I probably didn't play it because Endless Space 2 existed at that point, and I probably just was trying to... I don't know, maybe it didn't work or something. I mean, it does look like something I play. It is a turn-based 4x strategy. I probably will quite enjoy it when we get around to, when I get around to it. And if, oh, I look I in, both. and if I look in there, and if I look in there, available factions, one of them is indeed Horatio. So, yes, indeed. <laughs> we well, it's interesting. I also have both games. I'm pretty sure they give out these Why games. Do I have really. Why do I have space games? I don't even play space games. Everyone loves space games. Not true. I can name one person who doesn't love space. Fooch. What? No, she loves space. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Um, I carefully position myself at the back. I write what's just happening and do my best to blend in. So to blend in, wouldn't you be better trying to fight for the middle seat? <laughs> the Horatio in the red outfit seems to continue when another moves in the mic from the shadow of the arcade to the side of the room and climbs the steps of the podium. His feet echo softly on the green marble tiles. A red Horatio closes his mouth and deflates a bit. The other one is moving pretty slowly, and from the envious look of my closest neighbour, I don't imagine that's on purpose. He measures with red with a casual gut gesture and a hand and smile. The red Horatio leads the stand. With a grim, with a grin, the second Horatio turns to us. His cape flowing in empathetic demonstration that he's there, and demands our attention. Wow, this Horatio is like you. <laughs> Should I? I mean, yeah, you might as well use your regular voice for this one. <laughs> <laughs> when he speaks, his inflections are slightly different. I surmise that he probably spends a lot of time speaking to the public. Thank you, second-rate master surgeon, Actress B12. That'll be all. To each and every me, welcome to Kappa Station, finest in the cluster. Far <laughs> out, every me. Oh, that's almost <laughs> as bad as every birdie from bloody um, oh, from Hatafu boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> your memory imprints do not cover the last couple of decades since the last backup was distributed among cloning facilities in this quadrant well, that once again just seems like something that isn't perfect therefore a lot of the information you know and the finest you know you know and the things you know you know what <laughs> hold up Therefore, a lot of the information you know, and the things you know you know, may be outdated. <laughs> this is a crash course in what has happened while you were asleep. Let's start with the most important thing. Etiquette with regards to my person. <laughs> you may address me... <laughs> You may address me as third rank esteemed Grand Headmaster Rachai A Adernus Adernus P zero two. What the fuck? I mean, it's Sorry. definitely a big title. A title. <laughs> uh, he has the third rank esteemed <laughs> Grand Headmaster Radchi Eternus Pito two. God, pick a better title. God. In settings that only compromise initial level and above station personnel, you may call me simply Grand Headmaster 
or Master Eternus P02. I'm going to end up calling you Anus and you're going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. In public, said. in public, you will always address me as your likeness. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't choose your highness. <laughs> no, that's a lot more. You can just say your likeness. <laughs> Provided that the honor fix have been properly given and received in a small setting, you may subsequently call me sir. I'm guessing what happened was during these years, a bunch of rebellions decide who has the best titles. And so the titles have slowly evolved to be longer and longer and longer as they try and create their own hierarchy where they simultaneously are feel like they're on the top of, the, of someone and they feel like they're not having too many people on top of them. I feel like well, clearly this guy is ranked third, so there's two more egotistical randals out there. Yes, at least. He pauses for a second. <laughs> now that this is covered, let us move on to secondary top. So the primary topic of all importance that has happened in the last few years since clones start, uh, fast X number of years since cloning, is his name, and everything else <laughs> is secondary. Very good. Very yes. Good. First, your own identity. It is with a great pleasure that I deem you all initiate initiates initiates initiates. Yeah. More specifically, your full name will be first level initiate. I don't know that word. M Megras. Megras. Yeah. Megras. I'm yeah. gonna go with Megras. That sounds more what was written there. Since this is your facility of origin, and then your chosen name, along with your decanting birth and batch number, you are batched, batch twenty one of this administration. There is a hollow pad on your desk. You may use it now to approve your suggested name or pick another one. Wait, what? I look at the hollow pad resting upon the top desk. The screen reads: First level initiate Magres. Placeholder F21. Ah, so F B02 means he was from the second batch of clones. Huh. From from the sector B cloning labs. Please so old. I guess he's placeholders. I'm sure I can find something better. I make my mind. Can I randomly type in letters? That's what I do. Wait, no, I'll be stuck with that. Better find some discreet way. So, Brendan, I sleep though. Enter your name. Enter your name. Ooh! What should, I, what, what should thy name be? Al? It should be Al. I think it should be his Al. What do you think? It should be it should, Al? I mean, if, if they're egotistical people, it should clearly be Para. Yes, but this is my name. No, but I'm far more egotistical. That is true, but I am the one voicing this character. But I literally showed up in your stream demanding attention, so clearly I have claim on these people. Okay, so you want me to voice the character known as Para? Yes. Okay. You are definitely well suited for this game. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. The screen flashes for a second after I hit the submit key. Okay, my first level initiate, Megre Megrez Para F twenty one for now. I hope it brings me luck. The Horatio on stage must have some way of checking out our progress, because after a moment he continues. As initiates, you need not address category X personnel or unsightly species you may encounter directly. You may find the closest underling to do that for. How are we already not on the bottom of the totem pole? How is there already people below us? What sort of <laughs> shitty system is this? Clearly the people below us are the ones are the next batch of clones. That's true, that's true. It's like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Be aware that there are many new species that have been added to his glorious empire. Oh, I'm sure they love it here. I don't even know how to say that. How am I supposed Zin to get to say Zinu that? Uglies? It's Zenu and Uglies just put together. So Zen Uglies. Zan Uglies? Zen Uglies. 
Xenoglis aside, Z I, I don't even know. There might be some more aliens around the station. Do not be alarmed. They should all be tame. Dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> Generally, the rough and unwashed masses are kept away from their betters. But several client species are permanent residents aboard Kappa Station. It is entirely possible that you'll come across some of their representatives over the course of the next few weeks. To be fair, I'm not very egotistical. Well, I mean, I am, but I'm not this egotistical. But I could still see myself making an empire of clones. I'd probably give them a bit more freedom to be something other than me, though. <laughs> I'd be like... <laughs> I probably... Then they're not clones. Well, yes, but they would still contain my my DNA. So they are clones. They're just, I'd be like, yes, now you can go into the bay where you can change your appearance. And Children con contain their parents' DNAs, but they're not clones. That's true, that's true. Should you need to communicate with them, they are familiar with our speech and will attempt to replicate it to the best of their ability. So no universal translators in the Horatio Empire, gotcha. <laughs> Most of the new species we have encountered have proved just as disappointing as we expected. He smirks, he flicks his wrist and pulls his belt buckle free. With a wave, the buckle light lights up, revealing a small holopad. Fancy. Now, for a brief overview of what happened in the last decade. Relationships with the so-called fledging United Empire remain very old. I believe those are the humans. <laughs> Representatives from their young leader, a male Zalevas, have refused vassalage under their aus the auspicious leader of Horatio himself. Similarly, they have repelled violently several attempts at claiming outer planets of for our empire. Proceed with caution. A.K. the humans aren't taking their shit. Love it. <laughs> Relationships with a robotic insectoid hive known as the Carver Cravers? Cravers are still at an all-time low. They have eaten the last dozen envoys, as well as the ships that came up. I mean, fair. The colony of Heka was deemed lost after we had to vitrify the surface in the year... 10,191 after him. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So these guys basically... The Zerg, gotcha. So basically these guys are like outcasts. <laughs> Like, well, nobody has a good relationship with them. Okay, we've only had two so far. It's only been two empires. The humans, who definitely wouldn't like their dislocal asses, because they're already to themselves. And this just sounds like a ravenous swarm. They might still be better. Let's keep, let's keep checking. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> their strength would make a great addition to the empire. But at this time... We are not pursuing efforts any further. Similarly, we are currently not in speaking terms with the Sofin? Siphon? Sofin? Sofin Republic. <laughs> the diminutive know-it-alls. Wow, really? You're, you're going to be calling people know-it-alls. I got, yes, gotcha. but diminutive, so they're also short. <laughs> The diminutive know-it-alls have recently jumped the gun and seized the system of Ingrid. And, wait, this happened centuries ago. He flicks through several screens as Holopan records his discussion. All this information is completely out of date. Who messed with the geopolitical database? I am surrounded by complete idiots, I swear. Never mind this. He turns the hollow seed, slides, and then continues. I guess I will be doing this from memory. It might be a bit patchy, something that your own memories will definitely encounter too once you start living in your body for a while. I thought they were perfect, though. Right, if you're so perfect, you need to be perfect. Yeah. 
Something to do with having millennia of memories of him. <laughs> Moving on. You might be wondering why so many of you are being decanted at this time and for what purpose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, the, we should only have like nine people based on this room layout. <laughs> like, right there. <laughs> This station is home to Horatio Academy, where the best and brightest of his siblings come from all across the Empire for further education. The best of these, in turn, get a shot at joining the other Academy, led by a... V... v what? V Vianni? Maybe? Vignani? I don't know. Vodyani. V vod... I don't even know. What Yanni? I, these Vajani. names are so weird. Vagina, okay. Okay. <laughs> I do feel like the next word's gonna make it a little bit weird. <laughs> Vodani? V yeah, I don't, I don't I even know. It. Okay, fine. Let's go with Vodani. Male called is. Oh, come on. <laughs> Isanda, that one seems easy. It wasn't for me. <laughs> These names are basically cheating. <laughs> uh, it's just got this like, love, love thyself. Paris struggles to come up with ways to pronounce hard words. <laughs> Paris is clearly illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've never seen someone named Isander before? Oof. No. <laughs> ah, the Vodani. Life sucking ghouls who live in gigantic space arcs and prey on the defenseless souls of our breath. Except this. What's his name again? Isander. <laughs> Except this Isander fellow who fled them and founded the Academy, a place that has grown into immense power. They have knowledge and mastery of dust. Really? Dust? Apparently so. <laughs> this better not be the kind of dust I'm thinking about. What, what kind of dust are you thinking about? Dust. <laughs> like, dust dust? Yeah, like, you know, dust bunny dust. Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. The way you said it made it sound like there was some other more insidious version of dust. I had to know about. I'm pretty sure somebody out there is calling some kind of drug dust. I mean, I guess, yeah. And anyway. And <laughs> finally, the why so many of you. Well, two of our exploration vessels disappeared recently. They contain the brightest minds of this generation. Our best shot at getting the knowledge we're seeking. They were gone. They are gone now. And just a ver few very short weeks before Horatio Prime himself is due to review our Academy ca cadets. <sighs> Horatio Prime himself is coming to Kappa Station. And we have no cadets. <gasps> oh no! What? The shame this would bring to me and the whole station would be unbearable. Anyway, you have to go about um, three weeks to become these cadets. There will be extensive training. There will be classes. There will be etiquette courses and lessons of the last, of the latest courtly dances. Oh, yay. There will be no failure or else. Now. If you have questions, keep them for your instructors tomorrow. Oh, God. Time for you to get sustenance and retire to your personal quarters. He turns away and walks out the way he came, under the arcades and out of sight. That uh, Arturnus P2 guy is something else. Uh, he has turned the lure. What a jackass. Guess that's how people are around here. 
If I understand him correctly, I have three weeks to not only pass a normal ho for a normal Horatio, but become an outstanding specimen worthy of sending on to steal secrets from a powerful alien entity. Gotcha. You've always started getting up when the other comes. one comes back. Okay, but like, at this point, they'd all be clones. So when does the differentiation happen in their personalities? <laughs> like, wouldn't they all be exactly the same now except for this guy? Probably. Master Sergeant something something, I believe. Attention, please. So he's B12, so he's in the batch 12 of the B clone. You are now going to be provided with dinner. Oh, thank fuck. No shit. <laughs> Follow me to the mess hall. I'm hungry. Without waiting, he turns around, walks down the podium, and off in the opposite direction from when we came. My brother and I quickly follow. Finally, we get there. Compared to the concourse room we were just in, it's a rather drab place, somehow halfway between Spaceport and the hospital. It doesn't look like a place to enjoy dinner, much as a place to eat. A place to feed on oneself. Feed oneself. Some of my, I guess, classmates were already in line, and a few have already sat down to eat something I can't kind of identify. I'd say to say classmates, since I can't settle on whether they sh I should be feeling kinship towards one another. It does feel strange to hear brethren every other sentence, and I guess calling us cadets might be getting ahead of myself. The headmaster's speech didn't help normalize the situation, really. Someone bumps into me, and I realize I'm holding up the crowd. I get in line. I grab a tray and sign a rail. There is an odd kitchen utensil available. I'm not sure what purpose they serve. I compromise by taking a spoon from the lot. Upon closer inspection, I realize it's a spork. Wow, the future looks amazing. I look up at people serving us food. They're all Horatios too, wearing some sort of jumpsuit and looking pretty upset to be here. One hands me a bowl of something I don't quite recognize, so me a mean look at the same time. I'm surprised by direct eye contact, and before I know it, I'm saying, uh, hello, thank you. Horatio lunch press is as surprised as I am, frowns while saying back, Hello, enjoy your food. I've never seen anyone be so begrudging in saying thank you before. Yeah, why weren't you more begrudging? Like, it just went on saying about how it was very begrudging and how they didn't want to be there. I'm surprised you didn't do his more begrudging voice there. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably because I didn't understand why they were begrudging. <laughs> because they're clones, probably. They're, 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 they are Horatios too, but they're being forced to serve food to new initiates? That is not a job befitting a Horatio. <laughs> but then again, I've not seen many people. Take it easy, friend. I shuffle along and look at the contents of my bowl. It's slop. Definitely slop. I don't know what animal it came out of. Oh, well, at least it seems hot. I grab some water and a piece of bread. No dessert options. Princely. I look around for a place to sit next to someone, hoping for a bit of, well, any kind of interaction. I sit next to a bored looking classmate, but after a few overturns and encouraging smiles, I give up. Everyone's a bit on edge at the other tables. Looks like people are focusing on the contents of their tray. The slop proves the taste just as awful as it looks. Once I'm done pushing the last bits of food left, I stand up and put my tray back where I've seen the others do. A fair bunch of people left already, looking at their trays. It seems like I'm not the only one whose enjoyment of our dinner was minimal. Off to the side is a guard ticking people off a long list and sending them down the hallway. Is that that Master Sergeant dude again, I think? Some of us seem to have a different face marking from uniforms. I'm not sure what the markings are. We lock eyes and he barks up. What's your name, first level initiate? I enunciate clearly. I am Para, F21. First level initiate, Ma initiate Menges, Para, F21. <laughs> he searches for a moment, then he finds it. Yes, Para, F21. Your living quarters are in section B8, level 9, hallway 47, door 32. My See, god, that's a whole address. Yeah, but to be fair, <laughs> even if he doesn't, even if Para doesn't remember anything, they probably still have the power to remember it in general. Like, they are still a clone of the perfect Horatio, after all. So one would imagine they are still capable of perfection, right? Possibly, possibly. Or maybe they're just a child. Mm, don't think so. <laughs> it's down this way. Just follow the signs. You can't miss it. And if you do, 
You'll figure it out eventually. Will we really? I looked away as pointing out. I know the script hallway off the side, leading away from the concourse. I look back at the guard, but he's turned his attention to someone else. Hesitantly, I find door 32. My footsteps echo softly down long, empty hallways. It takes me some time to realize I don't see anyone else, though I still don't see voices echoing from afar. I heard you find my way to level 9, hallway 47. It's even quieter here at the station, but you're saying something. The doors are small, they're tiny affairs compared to the ones in the main concourse. Even the ceiling is much lower, about 2 meters high. The lighting is a mix of neon glare and impressive flicker tube that just refuses to give a ghost. I look around me to get my bearings. It seems I'm nearly at the end of the hallway, where bends leads to some sort of control system light support. I guess I'm getting the finest air in the area then. With one last look towards the map, I start down the hall. Door 1, door 2. 31, 32. This should be it. I look around. Might be the finest air, but oh boy, does this hallway look like it hasn't seen a mop in weeks. There are strange sounds coming from the next door over. Must be some life support control room. Ominous. Is this the right place? Section B8, level 9, hallway 47, door 32. Yep, this is no doubt this is me. I pull the meta heavy metallic door open with a groan and step inside. From my vantage point, I survey my new kingdom. From left to right, there's a tiny sink for my ablutions, a mirror that doubles as a hollow screen, a toilet with no lid, a closet, a narrow bunk with a blanket, and a pillow, some almost empty shelves, and my back to the door. Looks like a prison cell. That's straight up a prison cell. Yeah. All in a cylinder, about 2 by 4 meters. Cozy. <sighs> it may not be the warm brace of a cloning bath, but it will do. At least I have the place myself. I pull the door closed behind me. There's a distracting buzzing noise coming from an overhead fan. The finest air, huh? I sit down on my bed and look about. A bit too hot in here now, that door is closed. There are actually physical controls on panels, so I turn them, temperature down just a notch. The buzzing increases to a screech. Something scraped on metal? There is no way I can sleep with this thing on. I turn the knob back to its original level and the metal screech subsides. Ugh, screw it. I'll do it for tonight. Um, I pop myself down the bed, turn off the light, and pull the blanket over my head. There is sinister rubble in my belly. That doesn't bode well. Are we going to meet anyone? Like, who are we dating here? <laughs> right. I wake up with a start. I had a strange sensation. A dream? A dream which everyone was wearing the same face, smiled and snarled at one another in the same breath. They were all playing a part in some big play. I seemed the only one not knowing my lines, and my mask fell off and I died. I sigh heavily and push myself off the mattress. I stagger off the bed and put my hands on each side of the sink. I look into the hollow screen. The dream was real. I feel a strong urge to puke. I clench my hands and I sink my knuckles as uh, are as white as the fox porce fake porcelain that, uh, and the breathe, breathe as deeply as I can. Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. The feeling passes and I open my eyes again. I notice there's a blinking icon flash in the hot screen. It expands when I press it until it covers half the screen. Breakfast. Mess hall. Classes. Academy. Auditorium. Three. Lunch. Mess hall. Extra dishes. Specific. Dinner. Mess hall. Advanced classes. Specific. Breakfast is glazed out and classes are bolted. Looks like I'm actually late on my first day of class. I bolt out the door and run like my life depends on it. It does. Sorry I'm late. I guess we say so or grant to us wait, oh no. <laughs> was it Grand Headmaster first or was it Sir first? I think it was Grand, Grand Headmaster. Grand Headmaster. And then it was Sir after. Grand Headmaster. You are late indeed. Indeed, first level initiated. It seems that the redesign of this station altered it enough that fresh initiates didn't, do not find corresponding plans in their memory. Still, the last of, our, of your classmates arrived ten minutes ago. Have a seat. In the future, make sure you arrive on time. Initiate para F21. I scurry to my seat in the back. Against my bed judgment, my ears and cheeks have turned a very nice shade of pink. I can hear my classmate snicker. I sink into the comfort of my chair and try to ignore the burning sensation of my empty stomach. Adds its groans to the chorus. This is just great. A turn as PO2 gestures in the hall screen behind him. Moving on. So wait, the headmaster is teaching us all these classes? 
God, what sort of low budget place is this school? <laughs> He's clearly not as high ranking. No, not as Are we thinks. meeting anybody? Like, are we romancing the headmaster? I don't know. It did have one section before where we were like, wow, he's pretty hot. But that was all. <laughs> I want to see some alien booty. Considering that they're all men, you really want to see that. <laughs> Look, I've, it's about getting the reward for my long and hard work, damn it. Oh, boy. <laughs> I may be straight, but I'm going straight to the CGs, damn it. Um. (laughs) Okay. I don't actually know if this game has any, so don't worry. I mean, I'm not the one who's got a... I'm not the one who is, you know, not into men. Okay, that's fair. You can, you can, uh, that means you can just read both sides of the eventual sex scene. Perfect. <laughs> I'll just take my leave. It's fine. <laughs> no, I, I really don't think that's the sort of game, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> It'd be wild. <laughs> that was this kind of game. There, I think there is dating, but we, I doubt it would be anything worse than that. <laughs> this is a okay. comedy game, basically. <laughs> okay. Getting hot and flustered over the headmaster? Wow, you're getting there already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to contain myself. Contain the giggles. <laughs> Good luck. I, I believe in you. Oh, well, in that case... Over the next three weeks, you will undergo an accelerated program. You will, you would, bleh, you would better not, what? That is a weird wording. You better not miss a class. Subjects covered will be among others. Oh, wait, so this is the introduction and we only got into this part. I feel like we didn't miss anything. He starts to see of subjects in rapid fire monotone. It's a bit hard to follow. I make out a few words. Oh, he's monotone. Okay. Um, History of Horatio in the last 100 years. Astro cartography. Ego. What? Ego. Yeah. I don't even know how to. Ego teatation? I don't know. Egotiation? Negotiation? I don't know. Egotiation. I'm going to go with that. Egotiation. Etiquette. Startup imperialism. Dance. Valeting, valeting. <laughs> any any definition of that word does not fit with you from. Whose personal valley are you? I mean, look, we got to learn what you got to learn, Para. I hear. I am here to learn. <laughs> to be somebody's personal phallic? Apparently so. Any definition of this word would be an affront to an egotistical person. <laughs> As a, I'm imagining that's probably why the others were pissed to be working in the um, food, the eatery before. Well, okay. I mean, I you know, even even an egotistical society, lower class citizen. In a world, in a world of kings, there's still got to be the king that cleans the toilet. Yes. Okay. Valeting, personal grooming, speechcraft, xenobiology, dealing with lessers, horatiality, cooking, reception protocol. <laughs> Fencing, horatial resources, perfumes, gene. Genomic inference, hand-to-hand combat, social hygiene, sublight navigation, logistics, glorinomics, cloning 101, personal disruption, surveillance, xenopolitics, imperial... You said that twice. Uh, imperial maintenance. Fleet maneuvers, spacecraft care 101, aerobics, and... 
Just just a class called guns. Force charge. I frown. This sure sounds like an eclectic mix. I have a feeling that uh, simply repeating this list will wake up most of the three weeks of us. Will take up most of the three weeks of the disposal. Oh no. We will begin with an all-time favorite, personal group. <sighs> My classmates that are appreciative ah, and approving nods is subject choice. Oh damn. Next okay, you know, which which one of you clones is not bathing? <laughs> That's what I mean. I, they're clones. Why wouldn't that be included in the bloody first like draft of the, the memories, etc.? Is it something new that they only just learned in the last hundred years or ten, two thousand years or something? Like seriously, is this something you learned yesterday? <laughs> I don't. I don't. Anyway. Next up is a very detailed anatomical representation of a Horatio. Aternus PO2 begins. A melodonous chimes sound off the distance. Heads perk up and look around. Ah, time flies when we are happy. This is fun. I mean, apparently we didn't... I mean, it must have. Time has flied. But apparently we literally didn't come that late to class. We were halfway through the introduction. And that introduction took at least 10 minutes because he said his last classmates arrived 10 minutes ago. Like, we didn't miss anything. We don't need to be late at all. Do you think I, Do you think you would have loved it like everyone else did? <laughs> he didn't seem all that enthusiastic. So what, would you, what do you think Para would say? I did not have fun. <laughs> Truly, there would be so much more to say. There is a lot more material. Oh, God. We will get to some of it later. But for now, it is time for you to get lunch. This afternoon, you will be assigned your first extracurricular activity. Now, see, I guess the big question becomes... Um, when? How long do we give this? At the moment, it's been an hour. <laughs> um... Nobody has shown up to be our love interest. I know. I am. More, I am more than willing to cut this. Um, after this uh, <laughs> lecture okay, that have, he's done. Let's with. have lunch and then we'll go on. There's got to be someone we'll meet at lunchtime, right? Oh, for the drag, dragon man effect. Tomorrow, same place, same time. Do not be late. A passing glance in my direction is all the confirmation I need. I look away at detached air to avoid, avoid making eye contact. We're back in the mess hall and it seems Slop is back as well. Ugh. I can't tell I've had better, because obviously, but I'm pretty sure these aren't fine foods we're supposed to be enjoying. The faces around me are a mix of resignation and grumpiness, confirming my hunch. Ain't no, like, ain't no one liking the grub here. I shuffle along the line of my tray. The same Horatio I saw yesterday hands me a bowl of the same Slop, and I sigh again. The ratio lunch person hears it, his expression changes. Hey, you think this is enjoyable for me? It isn't. I look at him. You wouldn't happen to have anything to make this taste a little bit better, would you? Anything? He considers for a moment, and touches a little smice baker from the counter and hands it to me. You can always sprinkle this on top. I pour what little bit turns it what, what turns to be a pungent red flour powder on my food. I stop, look at my bowl, then add a little bit more, and a little more still. Soon the bowl is covered in a thin layer of red. The lunch person looks amused. That should be enough, buddy. Okay, thanks. I hand back the size taker and go find a seat. So are we gonna sit with someone else, try and meet someone? Just sit with other people. Let's see what other people also, are around. Okay, just notice that's what the slot must look like, and it looks like they're basically being produced by these two gigantic mechanical acids. Huh. Encouraged what could possibly be my first conversation. I find a seat with other people, and I find a table with an empty spot. When I put down my tray, the conversation gets quiet, the faces turn towards me. One of them pipes up. Well, if it if this isn't the late para F21. I realize my mistake, I pick up my tray and go sit on my own. 
I'll find no camaraderie for my for my classmates now I've been made the class dunce. I dig my spork into the bowl and give a new improved formula taste. It's actually pretty good. It's a nice rich taste of, well, something. Or rather. And it's just as unexpectedly warms up and explodes the flavor. I look up from my bowl, full of gratitude, as for Horatio lunch person. I smile at him, he gives me the thumbs up. He nods and cocks an eyebrow. I shovel big spoonfuls of delicious slop to my face, barely chewing it, and then spice hit me. My tongue suddenly becomes very, very hot. It takes a moment to realize what's happening. By the time I do, my mouth is still engulfed in what's soon by fire. I do my space to check on the food, find back tears. The ratio behind the counter is laughing heartily. He did it on purpose. Oh, no. <laughs> so should we give him a mean look or ignore him? Um, give him a mean look. I mean, he's been fairly nice. He gave us some, something to help with this, this flavor, at least. I gave him a mean look. At least I tried to. His laugh turns to a smile. I leave my tray on this table. He waves me as an asshole. I wander back in the room. I can feel a tri trail of fire down my throat and into my stomach. I wash my face in the sink and slowly gain some recomposure. The schedule on my holopad switches from lunch to extra clitoris. A little pop-up menu indicates I'm having imperial maintenance. The kitchen? Not sure what it's about. I don't be late. Or it's ready again. Now, the big question then becomes, do we just end it here? Or do I start pressing this big skip button? Uh... You could end it here, and if we ever want to do it, continue, we can continue. That is true. We, um, we could yeah. somehow come back to this later, which I'm sure would go fantastically. I mean, what? I've been Googling this, and apparently there's four uniquely identical Horatio clones that you can romance. Oh, very nice. Lots of choices. I'm guessing lunch... Um... Late lunch lady Horatio is. I mean, to be fair, lunch lady Horatio is probably the one of the ones that is actually been nice with so far, so I'd probably go for that. Why, you don't want the egotistical grand headmaster? No, I'd rather the egotistical lunch lady. <laughs> Me too, I'd rather them. Exactly. They seem more level down to the ground. Exactly, exactly. Which means I can step on. I mean, nobody can be more egotistical than I am. Oh dear. Thank you everyone for joining me. This is Love Thyself, a para story. I'll see you all <laughs> next time when, it, when and if we decide to ever play more of this. But for now, I really do want some lunch. So I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, para. Oh dear. Goodbye.